Hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And today is a very special episode because, well, it has sort of a deja vu type feeling for me. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the Carry SLP98 preamplifier. As you can see, it is a tube preamplifier. Now, here's the thing. I owned an SLP98 in, I think, like 2002, 2003. So this one I'm reviewing today is, is a vintage one. I don't know when it was made exactly, but it isn't new. Because, yes, Carrie is still making SLP-98 preamps, which came into production in 1998, is currently the second best-selling thing they make. That's pretty extraordinary. And that says a lot about, well, let's say staying power, right? And why, why does this preamp continue on with minimal changes from the way it came out in 98 and now in 2020. But, but, but the SLP-98 for me was my last tube preamplifier. After that, I was solidly solid state. So coming back to the SLP-98 after all these years, well, uh, it feels pretty good. It feels, I, I kind of remember this sound. Now, of course, everything else in my system is completely different. But there's just something about it. It, 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 it. It's that right balance between tube sound, very warm, full, blah, blah, you know, lush, and very cool, solid state, tight, fast, clean. It's right in the middle. Not too tuby, certainly not very solid state, right down the middle. By the way, it has a separate power supply, big chunky box, not very attractive, but it doesn't need to be. It's just a power supply. But the preamp itself, I think, is very attractive. That's uh, polished stainless steel on top. Nice machine metal front panel. So let, let, let's just talk a little bit about the new uh, SLP 98s, their prices, that is. So a new line stage version is $4,500. The one with the phono stage is $5,000. That's a moving magnet phono input. And if you want to use moving coils with it, which is done with a step-up transformer, it is then uh, $5,000. Now used ones, like the one I'm reviewing today, Go for a lot less, no surprise. Um, this one, which I got, which is on loan from High End Audio Auctions, which I will link to below, and I'll link to Carrie below. Um, they say these go for around plus or minus $2,500. So, a SLP 98, a vintage one. And by the way, this one was made in Cary, North Carolina, which is why the company is called Cary. New ones are made in Raleigh, North Carolina. The, oh, the tubes, those big fat tubes, you see, those are 6SN7s, uh, and there's four of them. Two of them are for gain, and two of them are buffers, basically. And then the phono preamp section uses 12AU7s and 12AX7s. Now, in this review, I did do a fair amount of tube rolling. Well, not a fair amount, a minimal amount of tube rolling, because especially in the phono uh, section, uh, whatever the stock tubes were, and I'm, sh I'm sorry, I didn't write down what they were, they were mm, not, not terribly interesting. They were a little grainy and lean and hard. So Adam at High End Audio Auctions sent me over a set of Telefunkens, and wow, <laughs> they're very expensive and new, new old stock tubes but they transform the sound of phono. I'll get into that s soon. Um, but anyway, so tube rolling is a part of, or can be a part of owning tube electronics. And with something like this, yeah, you, you should experiment with tubes. And he also sent along a set of Sylvania 6SN7s, uh, and those were also new old stock tubes. And they were mm, not to my taste. They, they push the sound too far into the soft and mushy direction, so they were in and out relatively quickly. Uh, and also, f since this um, version I had here didn't have the step-up transformer for moving coil, I used a Bob's Devices step-up transformer, uh, and I will link to that below. It's still in production. So, yeah, th this preamp... Um, felt right. Oh, speaking of feel, the knobs, you know how to think about knobs, right? The knob feel is fantastic. They, they're big chunky metal knobs. They're smooth. 
they just they glide basically. And when you change the input, there's no popping sounds or anything. Very, very quiet preamp, by the way. Even when I had the Cornwalls hooked up, yeah, I used two speakers for this review. High sensitivity Klipsch Cornwall 4s, and the preamp was super quiet. Now, I wouldn't say dead quiet, but pretty darn quiet for a two preamp. And I also used Dyn Audio Contour 20Is, and those I uh, will be reviewing very, very shortly. And now, oh, the remote control. The remote control is a chunky piece of metal, <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> it only has four buttons on it. Volume up, volume down, mute on, and mute off. That's it. That's all she wrote, and that's all I need. That's all I, that's all I care about, and it does it very well. Now, one little catch with the, with the remote is the volume ramp up and ramp down is a little fast for my taste. So we, I was always sort of going up, going down, going up and down to try to just get it right. And sometimes I would just get up off my chair and go over and turn the volume knob because I, I love the feel of the volume control itself. So yeah, so anyway, I, I like the remote. And if I live with this preamp, I probably would get used to the speed of the ramp up, ramp down. Yeah, the, the, this preamp sounds fast. And I don't mean transient speed fast. I mean in terms of forward momentum of the music. It has, it has get up and go. And I was playing the first White Stripes album. Wow. Meg, Meg White on drums. What a powerhouse drummer. Pounding away, just pounding. And, and Jack was thrashing on guitar and screaming his guts out. It just has that kind of, here we are, get out of the way. We're just, we're taking over here. And wow, what a great way to start a career. Um, anyway, and you know, it's, it's a good recording, this guy here. It's good. This is a remastered version, but it, it's nice. Very nice. Oh, then there's this. Now, orchestral maneuvers in the dark. Well, <laughs> this, is, this is basically dance music from the 80s. Now, this, this friend of mine, Mr. Mike, we called him, uh, he was into this kind of music, and he worked at Sound by Singer with me, and I, it wasn't my thing, but it was his thing, and I was around it so much that I wound up buying this record and others that he really liked. And I was playing it today, and it's kind of got that dance beat, uh, great vocals, great production, a lot of production, but really good, really, really good 80s UK thing going on. Fun. Again, I have to, I have to <laughs> return to just describing the music as, yeah, <laughs> right, give me more of that kind of sound. Then, then there's these guys. Now, Brazilian music, percussion and acoustic guitar, it's the opposite of what I just was talking about. It's about space. It's quiet, although it, is, it does have dynamics. It's just beautiful. You just sink into this recording. You just sink into the music, and it's there. It has, it has, it has density. As I was going through these records, I'm going to talk about a couple more. I switched back to the Past Labs XP30 Solid State Preamp. Now, it's much more expensive. It's, uh, I don't know if it's still in production, but it's a much more expensive preamp. And... Everything got faster, tighter, more precise, clearer, more transparent, layered even. All of that was happening. But that, but that density thing that the tubes were bringing from the SLP-98, I kind of missed that. I was like, I want that. I want that. I want both, actually. But anyway, um, it was an interesting contrast between the two that... Clearly, no pun intended, or clearly pun intended, the past labs just gets more information out of the recordings. And the SLP-98 is adding that, that density, that juicy quality, that voluptuous 3D palpability of live music. And I finished up with this guy here, Duke Ellington. Nice record. This is a mono pressing. I bought this used. And uh, I'm not into mono, but it was interesting to hear that deep mono stage. Um, this record, by the way, is on Frank Sinatra's label. Frank Sinatra started Reprise, and that's what this is on. So he had all of his pals, including Duke Ellington, on his own label. There's this beautiful, quiet rendition of Chelsea Bridge. It's just gorgeous. Just the harmonics coming off the horns. Just stunning, beautiful music. You know, tubes have 
color to the sound. There's more um, body tone richness to the sound. Uh, you feel like you could hear around each instrument and not just flat across the sound stage. That's what the 98 was bringing to the party. So yeah, if you want, if you want accuracy, don't buy the Carry 98. Don't buy any tube preamps or tube electronics in general. It's, it's not what they're for. They're, for. they're for beauty and a certain kind of truth that has nothing to do with accuracy. Just let's call it musical truth. The sense of people playing in front of you. That's what you get. That's what it's about. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. If you like it, please subscribe. Matter of fact, we're coming up, we collectively, all of us, we're coming up on 150,000 subscribers from all around the world, not just here in the U.S., but actually more people are watching this channel who aren't in the U.S. than are actually in the U.S. And that's, that's hugely gratifying to me. So if you have already subscribed, thank you so much for doing so. I really appreciate it. If you have yet to subscribe, come on in. Plenty of room here. Definitely join us. Um, but you can also check out the Patreon, which can be found at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac. Uh, and I will link to that below in case you can't write it down that quickly. Um, what else? We got playlists. And by the way, the playlists, people ask where the playlists are. If you're watching this on TV, I don't think you can access the playlist. But if you're watching it on a phone uh, or your computer, they're either uh, below these videos or there's a whole line of things, video, home, da da da. And one of those sections is called playlists. So that's how you get to the playlists. There's a playlist for more electronics reviews and speaker reviews and headphone reviews and music reviews. <laughs> so I think we're good. I think we've covered all the bases. And thank you again for watching. And I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.